are back with Dan Hassett of Levitate on the Dr. Geo Show. Welcome back, everyone. And Dan, we're so delighted to have you. Now, tell us first a bit about Levitate, and there's a concert coming up, so let's just let It's them... not a concert, <laughs> Dr. Joe. <Show. laughs> it is a music okay. and arts festival. Okay. Two this, days this... on the Marshfield Fairgrounds. Right here on the South Shore, we have... Okay. We have an international music and arts festival. This is... Yeah. People come from all 50 states for this. This is not a concert okay. on the green, I, okay? I, this this is a, a big deal. It is. This was a softball. So okay. go ahead. Tell us about this amazing festival. Because And you've been, you created this how many years ago now? Um, the festival, this is entering its sixth year. And uh, it's kind of a culmination of everything that Levitate has done. Uh-huh. Uh, we, we talked a lot about it, like, as our staff internally. And we didn't put it all together even ourselves until last few years but we we finally landed on the fact that what levitate is good at what our staff are good at as a team is bringing people together regardless of whether that's a through surfing or skateboarding or music or art and we think that's why the that like connection aspect of it that people can go and you know be at this event together in real life face to face is why it's had such traction and uh it's a, something we launched in 2013, actually on the 10-year anniversary of Levitate, the business as mm-hmm. a whole, and it kind of took off. We had done a number of smaller events, and this was the first bigger one, and it's now... Uh, so it started out just as the 10-year anniversary of Levitate? Correct, yeah. Levitate started in 2003, and uh, I didn't start it. The, uh, the late and great, my hero, uh, Bob Pollard, uh, yeah. Marshall guy, started it, and... He started it with the same premise that he wanted it to be kind of a community hub to bring people together, and uh, that's kind of stayed with us throughout. Um, and we we've kind of realized here that the the festival is the culmination of all of that. Uh, it's all it's all it's the whole 15, 16 years coming together. Um, so it's very uh, we're very fortunate to have it, and the fairgrounds is a unique venue. It is. It's you don't see no. these bands at a venue like that anywhere in the country, um, and I think the fans realize it's different. It is different too because we're not concert promoters by trade, and it's a historic venue. Yeah, it's very. Well. The, the venue is a big part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you just don't get to see it, and it's it's low key. It's a down to earth event. Um, there's really not like a, a really tuned up amount of production. You go to most concerts and there's fireworks flying and lights and lasers, and we don't have any of that. But it's a very popular event. And and when is it? And how do people get tickets to it? It's July seventh and July eighth, Saturday and Sunday at the Marshfield Fairgrounds. You get tickets at the Levitate Music Festival dot com or in our stores, which will sell out. Yeah, yeah, it's nearing without nearing sell out. So so don't expect to buy tickets at the door. No. no, right. So so tell us, Levitate. Tell me about the store. You, how did you get involved? Where, where did this all start for you? I was a busboy at the Mill Wharf restaurant in Situate, probably when I was 14 or so. And uh, Great restaurant. Yeah, great spot. I still go there. Yep. And um, the there was a guy there, Bob Pollard, Marshall guy, who was kind of a, a cool, the first adult that I connected with, that I knew, but that I would talk to. Um, and he would take, we'd always work Sunday brunch, me and my buddy John Basili, who worked there from Situ- Situate, and we'd all work Sunday brunch, and Bob was older. We didn't quite have our licenses yet, so he'd take us surfing, and then our parents would pick us up from the beach. And um, <clears throat> that's wait, something wait, that wait, doesn't wait, happen wait, anymore. But how, how did, <laughs> no. How did surfing? How did surfing? I mean, uh, I my I grew up summer in Hummer Rock. My grandfather had a place down there, so my, my father was a surfer back in the 60s and 70s, and my uncle was, and there was just boards around, and I have two brothers, and we just would surf when we were little kids. Hmm. We would stand up on our boogie boards, and then we found the old boards in the garage, and that's that's how we got into it. Okay. Uh, so we thought it was so cool and different, and uh, uh, my so myself and my brothers all, all surfed all the time, and other kids in the neighborhood down in Hamarack. And um, so Bob was this older guy that was like had traveled to Indonesia and South Africa and all these Costa Rica, all these places we had like never even heard of. So we had all these great stories when we were busting tables. He was a waiter. But one day he came in and said, I'm opening up a surf shop called Levitate in Marshfield, and uh, I want you, want you to work for me. Wow. So I was I was 16 when he said it. We probably opened when I was 17. Um, and that was like the best. Yeah, that was the best summertime job you could have as a kid. And uh, it was above Haymarket, the uh, the produce market that's still there, hmm. where it started out. And that's how I, I dove in. I worked summers. I worked weekends. I worked, uh, you know, in the winter after school. And then um, when I got out of... In college, I'd help out in the summer whenever I was home. And, and he passed away when I was 
um, in between my sophomore and junior year of college. Mm. Suddenly, so that was a big tragedy in town. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that was my, you know, I've actually been working at Levitate uh, since I was 17. Now I'm 32. Wow. <laughs> so wow. I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost half your life. It is, yeah. You know? So uh, that's how I dove in on it. And I, I you know, a couple of years after his passing, his uh, it was kind of, it was 2008, the economy had bombed and there was management issues. And his uh, uh, Bob's wife, her, her widow, Amelia, asked if I wanted to take over the store. So we worked that out and I've owned it since. So she approached you to do that because she must have had a lot of trust in you. Yeah, she knew I loved it and like I wanted to make it work. And um, I was young and crazy enough to take it over. <laughs> yeah. But also that, that idea of, of continuing a tradition and yeah, a, and, the know, legacy a, of it. The legacy. Yeah. And, and he has held the legacy proudly. Yeah, let me hear more about that. Let me hear about how, how have you done this? What, what have you done with this store? Because... Ten so it started out plus. as a store. Yeah, it was and a, now it's. I mean, yeah. Is it a verb? Is it a concept? Is it a <laughs> lifestyle? I mean, it is it's, way more. It's than a concept a store. of bringing people together. That's yeah, what it is. bringing and people. It doesn't together. matter if we're doing it. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We we have a new rule that we don't do anything new unless it is explicitly helping bringing people together in some manner. Very cool. And it's really helped us recognizing what we're good at, so we can just do that. Because there's all these crazy opportunities you could do, and some of them aren't really levitate. And we've gone down some of those roads and said, like, what the heck are we doing? Like, mm. um, so it's become quite a simple operation and in turn and concept these days, and it works. And I think it's in in people want that. It's it's lacking out there, you know. Mm. Um, I I hear about how it's the most connected the world has ever been, but in reality, I think people are the most disconnected they've ever been because you're connected via social media, yeah. but are, do you really know anyone? You know, right, right. And uh, everything we do allows you to know people and be around together with people. So it, it enhances that old neighborhood concept that no longer exists. Right. Interesting. And everyone remembers it. And even kids that are below the age of remembering it innately desire it. Yeah. And that's the, that's the key to the whole business. So, so give me some examples of, of what, what are you doing that connecting people? How are you doing it? Uh, the stores themselves are just our whole – it's supposed to be all about customer service. You go in there and hang out. It doesn't matter if you're buying something. You know, so not like Starbucks. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Get out! Sorry, oh my goodness. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Okay, go ahead. Is that uh, we do the uh, we do we've always done small events. We still do events. We do kids surf contests. We do camps. Uh, the camps are amazing because it has our opportunity to have our influence on on kids these days. There's a huge, huge demand for the camps. Hmm. The oh. surf camp sells out. In, it's like a Rolling Stones concert. Mm. People, the, the nine o'clock Saturday morning. You know how many weeks of camp do you do? Not, we do uh, nine weeks of that camp. Nine, nine weeks, Marshall. sold out by lunchtime. Wow. Yeah, That's it's great, and it's it's a testament. Obviously, we, um, all my kids have gone through it, and mm -hmm. they love it. It's an amazing camp. And uh, so we do the camps, we do events, we do little movie nights, little stuff too. It's not all major festivals, you know. Like we do a little thing where all the kids that can come, and we'll, we're doing this kids movie in the backyard of the shop with pop free popcorn you know it's always relatively simple and normally the more simple something is the more people right. like it as um, long as the people are shoulder to shoulder looking at each other instead of looking at their phones exactly right? so do you have a rule about that no phones or we don't explicitly say it but it just but you don't need them but it just right? naturally right. happens yeah i think it does i think it's it's natural and, and we do have a rule with our staff you know no phones at work period Unless you're doing work with them. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, and that staff would be retail staff, uh, camp staff, festival staff. Um, and the festival is just a, it's just, uh, is interesting. I think the festival took off because of this lack of connection, you know. I also think that it's in a part of the world where people around here are educated. They want to do fun stuff and it's not necessarily available. Mm -hmm. So you put a world class musicians and artists in front of them, they're going to come. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, it's we were just uniquely lucky to have the opportunity to do it here in Marshall. But but how how did you attract these world class folks? I think that's in, that's wonderful. The musicians? Yeah. We uh, initially we were gonna do so. You know, Bob Pollard started at Levitate in two thousand three. In two thousand thirteen, I owned it, and I said we got to do something for two thousand and uh, you know for the ten year. Right. And we kind of dove in. I met this guy that was like, you know, in the music industry. Um, 
we talk, I, I, you know what I did, honestly? I spent January and February and March of 2013, and I read every piece of literature on the internet that you could find <laughs> about the music industry. Hmm. And that's how you do it. Yeah. So I did a 10-year course study you in grind. three months. Hmm. Yeah, and grinded it out. I remember my wife or girlfriend at the time was like, what is the matter with you? Because <laughs> I found it to be so fascinating. It was so cool, and I, I could see it making sense for Levitate. And uh, we booked a band. I had... Um, I say I learned everything, but I didn't. And then I booked the band. It was the original Whalers, which was the biggest spend in Levitate history. Whalers, Whaler. But, so he's gonna do a ten-year anniversary, you know, barbecue. You know, let's let's celebrate the legacy and have some bands. And he gets the Whale. This is Bob Marley's former band, the Whalers. So he signs the Whalers. Why not? Why if you're gonna go hunting, why not go for one of the biggest wow. whales? Pun intended. And when you're hunting there. around, you find out that these bands are. Um, they're wow you find out they're out there and they're coming through and they're not playing in this area and you say so this one it was it's actually kind of amazing they were wow. playing a uh they were somebody paid big bucks for them to play at a funeral the night before oh really or a wake wow oh, that would have been great to be at that was in upstate new york and we were i was hitting up everyone on the planet every agent on the planet <coughs> music agent saying can we get your act can we get your act most of them don't reply original Lero said like basically you're not gonna believe it but we're gonna be in upstate new york the day before let's do it so cool. So it booked Everything it. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Right? yeah. Everything happens for and a reason. And he visualizes it. He sees it. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell. You know? But he has 100 people we got. Oh, he probably has 1,000. Yeah. Acts, so we got one act. Yeah. But it was a great act. It was perfect. And it was He fitting. worked hard to be lucky, right? I mean, that's, that's right. your line, that's right? right? He works very right. hard. Work you know, hard a lot of people are probably sitting back going, oh, he's, he's right. lucky. No, no, they, no. They weren't there at four in the morning right. with his cup of coffee and his laptop open, right. you know, grinding through learning this right. industry. So you got the whalers come to Marshfield. And now we had a crisis when we realized you have to produce the event. <laughs> <laughs> they don't just show up and pop up, right. you know, pop the stage. You got to build the event, get the security, get the um the stage, the lights, the sound, the production. How is the town? Great. I don't think they had any idea where it was. You know, I think if we went to the town and said, "Hey, we're going to do this 15,000 person monster music festival." Yeah. At that point, it would have been like, <laughs> no dice. But right. it grew incrementally. Yeah. And we, kind of, we learned and we proved ourselves along that path. As a, as a, a fair neighbor. Yeah. Too. Like you were a very conscientious neighbor. Yeah. We, we have a lot to lose because the rest of our company's reputation rests right. on it. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, we were always trying to do everything right by the town and the whatever, every, everyone involved, you know, and we still do to this day. So yeah, we dove in and we just realized that we were screwed and we were going to go to business if we didn't start selling tickets. So we just freaking hit the streets and started shaking hands and selling tickets. <laughs> and the first year you had how many people at the festival? Uh, it was like 1,500. Yeah. And we were expecting, like, when we first booked the whalers, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. We're going to have 150, 200 people there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. then it became a necessity to have those people there. We still lost a bunch of money, what seemed like crippling amount of money at the time. And uh, But we just kept plowing forward. And, and here we are in year six. Year six. We've got Trey Anastasio. We've got twiddle you know these bands yeah, right incredible we got stick figure yeah slightly stupid head in the heart head in the heart wow. these are big big but not regional not local yeah. these are big international bands where people are coming from all over now paint the picture for what people can expect at the marshfield fairgrounds we went last year i took um my now 10 year old during the day and we walked around and the arts piece is reason enough to go you know music aside the arts piece and the local farmers that were there it was really really cool what are we expecting this year yeah i think well, our whole thing here is that we're we feel lucky yes but also like in a great op we have a great opportunity and responsibility that as this event become has these international artists coming as the headliners it's our opportunity to do more local stuff yeah Stretch the kindness. Rush of madness, this is sadness, or just a show that 